Well, thank you very much, Fred. Um, I should start really by saying that I realise I have several hundred publications saying that HRT is beneficial, but it's only today that I have realised that I was wrong. <laughs> so I have to withdraw all those publications. That's it. <laughs> and I thought they've invited me here to, to, to say it is unethical to prescribe MHT, and what a perfect setting, because we are fairly close to the Coliseum, uh, and that's what I feel like, you know, <laughs> coming in as a gladiator. Not only that, I mean, it's hard to, to, to challenge uh, the, the motion of the debate, but it's even harder when they choose an opponent. My good friend uh, Martin Burkhauser, who I've known and admired for so many years, to make my job almost impossible. I mean, how can I debate against a man who, who is all these attributes that he has? You know, he grew up learning to shoot apples off the heads of his children. He's a man of so many talents. And worst of all, how can I, a simple Stevenson, debate against a man who has three consecutive vowels in his surname? <laughs> but I will try. So the benefits of HRT, Martin has uh, very, very uh, superbly outlined. Symptom relief and osteoporosis are the main ones. So let's have a look and see how necessary is it to, to use MHT for these indications. Well, in terms of vasomotor symptom relief, of course, there are lots of other things that we can use. We don't need to use MHT. We can use the SSRIs, the SNRIs. High-dose progestogens will relieve menopausal symptoms. Lots of good natural products as well. Soya, black cohosh, etc., uh, and all these other things, oil of evening primrose, all very natural, very gentle, and very effective, I'm sure. Now, Martin comes from Switzerland, and Switzerland certainly is a bit of a cold place. I believe his house is somewhere near the top here. And so in the winter, it obviously is fairly cold, and he's missing an opportunity. Because if you don't use monopausal hormone therapy, then you're going to maintain a healthy glow to your complexion, and furthermore, you'll be radiating so much heat that you'll cut down on the fuel bills over winter. You're saving money by withholding MHT. Let them flush and keep the house warm. <laughs> what about genitourinary symptoms? You don't need menopausal hormone therapy for them. You can just simply use lubricants. You know, there are things like replens that hold water in there, KY jelly. Let your patients proudly wear the badge, I am a KY jelly baby. And then the psychological symptoms, again, the SSRIs and the SNRIs are very effective in relieving anxiety, relieving depression, uh, better than HRT, and, of course, at the same time will help relieve vasomotor symptoms, as I mentioned earlier. And you can even use uh, things like mini-dose Prozac to uh, end the misery of premenstrual symptoms, and so these can be used as well in postmenopausal women who've got those sort of symptoms, the irritability, anxiety, and whatnot. So we have proof, and this is real proof because it's the Daily Mail, and that's definite proof. <laughs> so what about, what about, that's the symptoms dealt with, what about bones? Because that is an indication for using MHT to prevent osteoporosis. But we've got so many other things that will prevent osteoporosis, all these other agents that are effective, the bisphosphonates, SERMs, uh, parathyroid hormone, denosumab, others as well. So we really don't need to use MHT uh, because we've got alternatives. And look how easy they are to give. You know, the bisphosphonates you can give once a week or once a month or once every three months, denosumab once every six months, Zoledronate once every year. That's so much easier than having to swallow tablets every day or stick on patches and slap on gels. These are treatments that are effective and so easy to use. So we don't need MHT for any of these indications. So what about the other possible benefits? Well, 
menopausal hormone therapy and coronary heart disease prevention. All these studies have shown, of course, that there's no beneficial effects of HRT on coronary endpoints, and we'll quickly slip over that. What, in fact, you can do if you're worried about coronary disease, you don't need hormone replacement. You just need to avoid the risk factors. Stop smoking. Get your various metabolic disorders under control. Lose a bit of weight. And just go for the protective factors. A diet that is rich in fruit and vegetables. And even better, allow that fruit to ferment because alcohol is a very protective effect against coronary heart disease, a therapy which I have been known to apply to myself on occasions. And then exercise as well, very important. And there the secret is, make sure that you run to the bar. So what about the risks then? Why, why is it unethical to give HRT because of all these risks that Professor Burkhauser just glossed over, pretending that they weren't important? And I'm going to look at them in a little bit more detail. The Million Women study, that brilliant study. Can a million b women be wrong? Not even one woman can be wrong. My wife, personal communication, just before she went out today, in fact. The Million Women study uh, was a big, big study, observational study, showing a doubling of risk for combined HRT, an increased risk for estrogen alone, for TIB alone, and the lead author, Val Professor Valerie Beryl, her study is so good that the Queen of England made her a dame of the British Empire. So you cannot argue with that. The Women's Health Initiative. If we look at what the risks were and what the benefits were, then you can see that, in fact, the risks add up to greater numbers than the benefits. So WHI, a brilliant study, superbly designed and executed, uh, and absolutely fairly interpreted, has shown quite clearly that menopause hormone therapy is actually dangerous. And then there's the effect on, uh, on ovarian cancer. Uh, another study by Professor Beryl, so it must be true, uh, who found that looking at 52 epidemiological studies, there was an increased risk of ovarian cancer with HRT use, and she concluded, I'm sure absolutely correctly, that the increased risk may be largely or wholly causal. So HRT is not only causing breast cancer, it's causing ovarian cancer. The WHI statistics uh, showed quite clearly that most of these things were uh, increased. Um, I applaud the WHI investigators for, uh, as Manuel Nevis Castro pointed out to us many years ago, they introduced a new disease to the world called Global Index, uh, and that has increased with HRT. So really nothing good. And don't get confused about statistics. Uh, you, can, you can just ignore those. I mean, the WHI investigators have, so we all can. Stroke, as we heard from Martin uh, there is an increased risk of stroke, even with transdermal here and with oral therapies. So that clearly is a, a major uh, concern for giving HRT to anybody. You're going to increase their risk of stroke, as well as increasing all these risks for cancer. And as we heard from uh, Martin, he, he did admit that HRT increases the risk of venous thromboembolism, a 7.5-fold increase in venous thromboembolism with HRT, and that was published in JAMA, so it must be true. We cannot argue against it. I mean, there's a little bit of an age difference between these two groups, but don't get confused or concerned by minor details. And gallbladder disease. HRT increases the risk of gallbladder disease. <clears throat> you can see the, a huge increase here. Uh, uh, well, uh, perhaps even 10%, massive increase in the use, with the use of HRT. Uh, and cholecystitis is a very painful condition, so we should certainly want to avoid that. And it doesn't matter which estrogen you use, you're still going to have the same adverse effect. And finally, the regulatory authorities, who are the wisest of all. No one can argue with them, and they always get everything completely right. They are never wrong, a bit like the Pope. They said all these years ago, 2003, that the benefit-risk balance of HRT is favourable for the treatment of menopausal symptoms, but the minimum effective dose should be used for the shortest duration. And I would interpret that as being one lick of an oestrogen tablet and then throw it away. 
The balance, risk balance is unfavorable for prevention of osteoporosis as a first line. Um, in women without symptoms, the risk-benefit ratio is unfavorable. And it's not just the UK regulators, but regulatory authorities worldwide have adopted these wise words of advice. And so we should be following them and listening to them. And I've already shown you we don't need HRT to treat menopause symptoms. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, MHT is only safe in the short term, and it's not wanted by most women, particularly those that read the wise words of the Daily Mail. There are excellent alternatives to menopause hormone therapy available. Symptom relief, fracture prevention, coronary prevention, are all available from other therapies. We don't need MHT. The risk-benefit ratio is unfavorable, as stated by the regulatory authorities. So menopausal hormone therapy, Mr. Chairman, is now obsolete, and therefore it is unethical to prescribe it. And although Professor Berkhauser is usually ruthlessly accurate uh, in his conclusions, I think on this occasion that he may have actually missed the target. Thank you very much.